Hello everyone, this is Ray Space, and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12, where I'm once again developing a new part. It is not my own idea. In the comments to a previous video, Plain Text 384 mentioned that Blue Origin was developing its own version of the Cislunar Transporter. Previously, the Cislunar Transporter was supposed to be developed by Lockheed. This is a hydrogen-oxygen stage that is supposed to help refuel the Blue Moon Mark II lander from Blue Origin. And so I guess it makes sense that Blue Origin this, uh, is deciding to make their own version of this. And so it's basically a big hydrogen oxygen tank with three BE-7s at the bottom. So I have the tank here and then we need to put the BE-7s at the bottom wherever I've got the BE-7s in the midst of all the other engines I have. Actually, I think that one's fine. So here it is. It's got apertures four to three. Mines are fairly small. There's another BE-7 model, this one, that has them larger like that. I don't know which version is strictly correct, but the gaps in this model will accommodate both. And it is basically a seven meter stage in diameter. And so it's matching the size of the second stage of New Glenn and the first stage of New Glenn for that matter. But I shaped it so that it would more or less match the second stage of New Glenn, which is a Hydrolox stage anyway, but it has different engines. And this whole thing is based on basically a single image. And that image is this one here. Uh, so this is all I had to base my model on and I've taken some liberties. So just a warning and uh, taking a look at this, we'll see that I can't really tell where the RCS thrusters exactly are. I can sort of see hints of them, but it's not clear. Probably some mounting points. The top end seems to be octagonal, uh, and then the bottom is hexagonal. You can see that, yeah. Uh, I didn't like that, I made it all octagonal. It might be that both are hexagonal. It's not super clear, but I think the top is octagonal up there. Uh, it made everything a lot easier to just make both of them octagonal. And that's partly because if you have four sets of RCS thrusters at the bottom, and it sort of works out a little bit better that way. Uh, the foil texture is darker in the image than I have it. It's not entirely clear what these are, either they're radiators or solar panels, but if it's running off of fuel cells, it doesn't need the solar panels, or maybe it's conserving the hydrogen and oxygen so that, uh, and so that I'll use solar panels part of the time. Uh, but, but obviously the main function of them is to block sunlight and block heating of the tank, which has the MLI layers on it. But solar panels can do that too without actually being radiators. I assume the white panels here are sort of like radiators, but they're only covering the part that those panels aren't covering. But then this seems to be a gap here. If you take a look at these panels, the length when they retract can't possibly cover the entire tank surface. So I have a lot of questions. I have a question about how they plan to close the top of it for launch because, you know, there's got to be a fairing around this somehow, but it's basically the full diameter of the stage. So they probably don't want to create a new fairing to wrap around it. And my guess is they're just going to have a little inner stage to connect to the bottom of it and then some fairing on the top, but you don't really see any fairing link things or anything indicating that on top here. So I've got questions uh, as far as exactly how it's supposed to be. Mine doesn't look great yet, but they're probably going to make changes anyway. Uh, when it extends, the way it deploys is like this. So I have it going like that and then little flaps coming out like that. So it has gaps and I don't know what to do about that exactly because the length here is the same as the length there. If I try to make any longer, it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. So my guess is the way they have it, it's sort of more flexible material. As there are solar panels that have that sort of flexible material. This is rigid as most models are going to be unless they're very complicated and have a lot of polygons. This is a low polygon deal. So yeah, it is not quite as good. 
I probably need to make that texture darker judging from the image and I'm surprised how not shiny those panels are considering it's the same shader on the whole thing. They need to be a little bit shinier. Uh, I put my normal set of RCS ports on the top and that since I don't know exactly how they're going to have it and right at the top it's meant to have a docking port. Let's just verify that the normal NASA docking system can fit just fine. There it is. So that is a normal sort of deal. But fairings? I don't know. That's a question mark. Now, right now, it's a little bit underfueled. According to the conference information that was linked by plain text, uh, they are planning to have this be able to push 100 tons to the moon. And that's a lot. So it's probably carrying more than this vessel mass, 162 tons of which 150 tons is the fuel. Uh, this is set to the same mass as the second stage of New Glenn right now, but it has more volume. Right now, for now, until I get better numbers, it's got enough volume to carry 202 tons of propellant and it's 215.2 tons total. Now. So you will just dump out the existing hydrogen and oxygen tanks and fill them. Of course, this is going to be linked in the video description. It's part of the real spacecraft pack that I've already released. I've just updated it. And the reason it's part of that pack is because that pack already has my BE-7. So that's the most convenient thing to do. And one thing I should mention is that I didn't make the model for the Blue Moon Mark II, which is what this is primarily supposed to refill, though it's got a lot of other mission plans for it. Uh, the Blue Moon Mark II is made by EsaQuest, so I'm not making a model of that. I'm satisfied with the EsaQuest model of that, and I use that one. So uh, if you want a good model of it, you should use that. Uh, I think I had released RO configurations for that in another video. Uh, but maybe they have different ones. I don't know why the price goes negative there, but that's another problem. But this will be launched under fueled and probably down to 45 tons, so it's a little bit inconvenient. Somewhere like 15% fueled, it'd be launched and then it will be refueled by subsequent launches of New Glenn. And so that's got to take a few refuelings. If we've got 200 tons total of propellant, and we're launching, say, with 30 tons, that's 170 tons left, and so we're talking about four extra launches after the first one. Uh, probably it's going to carry even more fuel than that, but I've limited the tank utilization to 86% in this case. I probably should have a higher dry mass of this, but it's not entirely clear to me. If it was just the New Glenn second stage tanks plus some extra structure for radiators slash solar panels plus the fuel cells. Um, this would probably be okay, but the MLI layers, I mean the MLI layer mass is calculated separately in theory, but I don't know if that's working out quite right right now. But yeah, the, it might be heavier than it is right now is what I'm trying to say. And I don't have the dry mass number on it. So that is a question mark. It has various other features. If you do get boil off, it's got containment for the hydrogen and oxygen. I was originally thinking of running the RCS thrusters on that, on the gaseous hydrogen and oxygen, but right now they're running off of the liquid hydrogen and oxygen and actually igniting instead of being cold gas thrusters, so they get better efficiency like that. They get 400 seconds of ISP. So just to be clear, this is just a stage that's meant to transport things out to the moon and it's supposed to be able to handle 100 tons, though I don't know if we have enough propellant for it right now. Let's see. And actually, I said can go out to the moon with 100 tons, but they, they included the capture in that, I think. Okay, so that that's 100 tons right there. And this is now full with the 200 tons of propellant. This gives us 4,446, so that's plenty to do the job. Now with the three BE-7 engines, that's a two hour burn time. So uh, so what, what I'm thinking right now is probably it has more dry mass and it probably doesn't need more propellant. Uh, now with the 150 tons that uh, Blue Origin New Glenn second stage would normally have, 
it's probably a little bit closer. Let me, even with the 150 tons, we're looking at 3,659 meters per second, one and a half hour burn time. So that already is pretty good enough. It looks very plain right now because I was just going off of a very plain sort of image, but it does have some detail, really, actually. But yeah, I'm expecting things to change, so I didn't do a whole lot with this. It's meant to be functional, maybe not the most aesthetically pleasing. But let's cheat it into orbit and see that its RCS is working properly. Okay, so here's how we are. I tried to angle the upper thrusters so that they would blow away from the payload, but, well, not super successful right now. I might need to up the power of the thrusters as well, but it seems like MechJeb is just being silly. This is the hybrid controller. Let me just try SAS, oddly enough. Okay, extend. And they did have it flat out like that. Maybe if they were tilted in a little bit, they would meet, I'm not sure. But it is still reading the 3,600 meters per second. It would be tedious to use because of the burn time. Uh, once again, Pekka's warp thrust might be necessary. Oh, we accidentally filled up the hydrogen and oxygen. That's only supposed to be boil-off containment. It's not like it's a whole lot of hydrogen and oxygen, really. With the either hexagonal or octo octagonal shape, it sure seems like it might need a special adapter. Anyway, okay, okay, that's enough of that. So yeah, that doesn't make too much of a difference, but here it is, this lunar transporter, the new version from Blue Origin, as far as I know about it. Uh, of course, there's the older version from Lockheed, which I never modeled myself, and might still be useful if we don't want to have such a big thing, but we'll have to see. It probably needs a higher dry mass, I'm thinking. So that would nerf it a little bit and maybe make the Lockheed version a little bit more useful. But maybe we just want to keep this one. I'll have to think about it. The main thing is to get some sort of fairing around the top. And I don't know what that would look like exactly, but I'll work on that. Uh, so this will be part of the real spacecraft pack. I'll link that in the video description and you can play around with it. It seems like an interesting sort of thing that could be very useful for many different kinds of missions. It's certainly OP for just refueling the Blue Origin Mark II lander, the Blue Moon Mark II lander, because that only needs, that's 60 tons total. So we don't need a 100 ton capacity for that. So yeah, it's an interesting sort of thing. What do they have planned? Well, I guess we're going to find out. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.